so, so I want to get the uh, the river Styx water. Alexander scoops a little this. of the river Styx into the teacup with Did you know about this Kentucky Fried Chicken? Be careful not to get any of the... What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, well, after, after. It's a little disturbing. It's going to throw up. Will these... Charon X... Backtracked a bit. We went to a different save. So I had to go back to the old save, unfortunately, but we're just gonna rush through here. And. I wanna hear him say. Alexander walked. Ah! Wait, I didn't even. Oh, I walked too close. It must have been love. Ugh. Right. Oh, that was a hint. It must have been love at first bite. Right. Let, me, let me save first as soon bite. as I get there. Right the so on your feet. Alexander doesn't want to experiment with your... Alexander doesn't... Alexander scoops a little of the river sticks into the teacup with the swamp ooze. Being careful no... Will these Charon X? Right. Now this time I'm gonna save so I don't make that mistake again. Suddenly, the Hello again, Dor. What ice? Despite I would my no fit and what I have been <clears throat> and if the agreed. Listen, my foot, my first is foremost legally. My second circles outwardly. My third leads all in victory. My fourth twice ends a nominee. My whole I ah. But I answered it. I think you forgot to press the L. Let me try that again. I think you forgot to press the L. Yeah, suddenly. Did I press the I instead of the L? The I looks like what? an L. I sh Despite I would too much. My no. And why I have been <clears throat> and if the agreed my foot my first oh, is yeah, foremost is legally. Oh. My second circles outward the answer Rah! love can Enough <laughs> Excuse the Schroeder go What if you kiss my Did not command me. He has the gun. He shall The man of. And what? I seek this. You either are very or. Ah, for thou. I have this. Make death. Sooner or far. On the mirror. If you exist. The mirror's surfeit reflections of despair, of wailing souls, of shackles colder and more immutable than any forged by man of a world of thirsts that can never be quenched. Alexander feels the mirror tremble in his grasp and is glad that he cannot see its face. But the Lord of the Dead is transfixed to the mirror, to the screening of his life. Things long forgotten are once more uncovered. His enslavement to this throne while still a man, the years of watching misery and horror and growing ever more numb to it, the seep of his own humanity, the slow growth of a new thing altogether, which became that which he is now. His is an existence that has no possibility of redemption, no end. The surrounding spirits draw away in pain. The truth is so sharp it stabs, so intense it sears. 
Take it away. Make it stop. The mirror of truth cracks from the strain, and death sheds a single gray tear. Truth is indeed a terrible thing. I have worn this mantle for so long, I had forgotten its dreadful weight. You shall take the souls and leave as I agreed. You have been granted to stay from this inevitable reality. I almost envy you. Find the souls he has claimed and bring them to me. King Calafim and Queen Alaria, I presume. Thank you, my... And... Until we... No effect. It is... N yes, my lord. Are you coming, Majesty? El Hazred's treachery must be handled carefully, Alexander. Alari and I must go gather our allies and form a plan. Watch over Kasima. Make sure she comes to no harm. We will return as soon as we can to take back all that has been stolen from us. I will keep her safe until your return. Thank you, son. Your love for our daughter must be deep indeed for you to have undertaken death itself for our sakes. Indeed. May we succeed in what awaits us, and live long together as a family. Alright, so now let's get back to that wall. Mm-hmm. So now look at the spell book and see what you're see see how to make the spell. You might want to save too. Why? Just because now we have all the ingredients and we're here. Got it. Here, let me do the save. Magic door. Okay. What'd you save that? Magic door. Huh. Okay, so let's um. Look at the book. No, hand on the book. There don't seem to be what? any spells for blank walls hey. in the spell book. No, you gotta use the hand on the door. But you can... This is what there you do. don't seem to be any spells for... I did it before for... and it worked. You gotta do this. You use the hand and then put it on the book. Oh, before I didn't do that, I won. Okay, so add sticks of water to swamp who's in the cup. We did that already. Stir with a horse feather and apply to a blank surface surface with an artist brush. Speak incantation over the painting to materialize. Okay. Okay, so so stir with the horse feather. How do I get it? Okay. A horse feather? Alexander dips the large black feather into the teacup and stirs the contents gently. I just noticed that we've never used the rabbit's foot. We did. When? The gnomes. To his amazement, the jet black color of the feather slowly drains from end to tip into the teacup. The teacup mixture blackens and thickens to a paint-like consistency. Alexander carefully puts it away, discarding the drained feather. Now, do I take the ta paintbrush mm -hmm. and then I put it in here? To paint something, Alexander must first choose a location where he wants to paint. The paint can then be used on that location. I just want to do the painting part and then I want somebody else to put it. Okay. So paint the wall. Here? Mm-hmm. 
Feeling artistically inspired, Alexander decides to make use of the large blank castle wall. How does he know to draw a door? Ah, a doorway. Just what Alexander was thinking this wall needed. Okay, so now you gotta speak the incantation. How? Go back to the book. Go, go, to the, go to the spell, go to cast. With trepidation, Alexander gathers his strength for the enchantment of the painted door. Magic paint, black as ink, bring to life what I think. Make it real what I draw, according to this spoken law. The spell worked. The door has magically solidified. I don't know why I wanted to do that part. <laughs> we wanted to do all games. Wait, I'm just going to save. Save because we already got the door. Eager to be inside the castle at last, Alexander opens the enchanted door and steps inside. The magic paint door fades back into the Wait, wall. Who wants to do this? So much for an easy exit. Who wants to do it? Quick. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Mother? Mother, where are you? A spirit weeps inconsolably on the cot. The spirit appears to be the ghost of a little boy. What's the matter, little boy? Why she would just leave me here? I've been alone ever so long. Mother? Mother, where are you? He's a ghost. You must be the son of the spirit I met in the realm of the dead. She gave me this handkerchief and asked me to tell you that she's waiting for you there. Alexander doesn't see any way of opening that door manually. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Is that the one we get in? Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Alexander is standing in a dim, damp dungeon cell. The walls and floor are made of gray granite stones. A cot in the corner is the only furniture. A gargoyle peers down maliciously from over the dungeon door. What's that thing next to it? The bed. A shackle comprised of a thick iron chain set into a heavy stone block protrudes from the wall. It is perhaps used with particularly difficult prisoners. The heavy iron shackle is of no use to Alexander. He'd like to avoid chains as long as possible, actually. Yeah, there's really nothing we could get in there, I think. This is the dumpster we get from. 
Sam who decides to find out what's on the other side of that door. Prince Alexander, I can't believe it! How did you get into the castle? Well, I... Actually, it's a little hard to explain. I bet. <laughs> you run the terrible risk of being here, though. The castle is crawling with guard dogs, especially today. The Wazir will have your hide if he finds you. I know that, Jallo. But Cosima is being married today. What greater risk is there than that? Of course you're right. Young love. <laughs> I forgot what heartburn it is. But what are you supposed to do about it? I've got to try to see her. Maybe even stop the wedding. Is that all? And here I thought you would try something dangerous. <sighs> Don't worry about me, friend. Just tell me, where is Cosima? As far as I know, she's still in her bedroom upstairs. You'd never make it up there, though. The guard dogs are everywhere, and they're very loyal to the crown. Unfortunately, right now the crown means El Hazred. If we had proof of something truly a foul, the guard dogs might listen. As it is, they're your enemies, not his. I understand. I've had no lack of enemies since I got here. In fact, you'd almost think I wasn't welcome. <laughs> and they say princes have no sense of humor. <laughs> well, I can see there's no putting you off. For Cassina's sake, I wish you luck. I'll be here if there's anything you need. Thanks, Jalo. I've been thinking of what you said about swapping a replica for the genie's lamp. I got this lamp from the old lamp seller in town. Do you think it will pass? Why, yes! It's an exact replica! That's amazing! How did you guess? I suppose it was intuition. <laughs> I'll have to wait for the right moment, mind you. But I should be able to get close enough to swap this for the real thing. And none shall be the wiser. Now you shall see Jalo's skill. I'm sure your hands are mightier than my sword, my clever friend. <laughs> Go ahead and do as you've planned. And let me worry about swapping the lamp. If I accomplish the trickery, I'll manage to get the lamp to you somehow. You never fear. I have faith, Jalo. You are a true friend. Oh, shucks. I'd do anything for the princess. The wall above Jallo's desk sports a notice of his circus. It seems very old. Jallo keeps his desk neat and tidy. A plain trunk provides minimal storage for the bedroom. The comfortable-looking bed in the corner is neatly arranged. It looks just large enough for Jallo's generous size. Alexander doesn't want to intrude on Jallo's privacy by looking for his trunk. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we need here. Let's see what it says. Jallo! He just said Jallo's Jello. trunk. Jallo Jallo. Jallo Jallo. Jallo's trunk. From the East Hall, Alexander hears the sounds of a door opening and a guard's footsteps trudging heavily down a flight of stairs. A closed door on the north wall bears a small brass plaque. The plaque reads, Guard Room. Uh-oh. This is that night that the boy spoke about. In the corner is a suit of armor of ancient design. Its right arm beckons slightly. Said to move the arm. Remembering what the little boy ghost said, Alexander experiments with the suit of armor. He pushes down, then pulls up on the knight's right arm. A secret passage. Alexander hears Stop the sound here, we'll of voices pizza. coming from nearby. Save it as um yellow room trap door arm. Oh my god, these names. <laughs> Alright, so we got into the secret room here. Let's see what's in this hole. Alex 
bartender peers through the chink in the wall. Captain, I've been hearing rumors from the guards who've been watching the princess. They say lately she's been pounding on her door and begging to be let out. Ain't none of my business, sir, but news like that is upsetting the other dogs. Ain't no guard in the castle who is willing to keep the princess anywhere she don't want to be. Azred claims that a foreign intruder is here to assassinate her. That's why she's got to be kept under lock and key right up until the wedding. Call me an old dog that can't learn new tricks, but I say the princess should be the one given the orders. Al Hazred has been in charge for months, what with the king's death and Kasima's mourning. Tonight, the wedding will seal it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like him or not, he's our liege. Need I remind you of your oath to the crown? Aye, we've an oath. For the sake of the princess, we'll not be forgetting it. He'd just better treat her well. Speaking of the wazir, what do you reckon he's keeping in that magical room of his? It's not a magic room. It's just the door he's enchanted somehow. I say he's still got the royal treasury in there, along with whatever else he's so eager to protect. Not even the court treasurer is allowed in there anymore. That's the door we couldn't open. I heard him in the hall the other day. He was speaking to that door. Black magic is what I say. I heard him say, Ali. But then Bay came up and started yapping at me. <laughs> Enough! It is not our place to question the practices of our liege, no matter how strange. The wedding will be starting soon. Report to the throne room when you hear the music start. He was speaking to that door. Black magic is what I say. I heard him say Ali, but then Bay came up and started yapping at me. So Ali is the first part of the word. We gotta find out what the second part of the word is. Let's see what's upstairs. Phew, that was a climb. Alexander hears the faint sound of a woman crying nearby. Alexander peers through the chinks in the wall, trying to locate the source of the crying sounds. Alexander's palms begin to sweat and his heart to race. It's Cosima. He's found her. Psst. Princess Cosima. What? Who's there? It is I, Alexander. I'm here behind this wall. My, how suave that sounds. Alexander? It really is you. Oh, I knew you were close by, but how did you get inside the castle walls? It's a long story and not important now. You did get my ring. Oh, yes. It has brought me such comfort, Alexander, to know you were close by and had not forgotten. But you shouldn't be here. You're only endangering yourself. I don't care about the danger. I would brave anything to learn. What is it? Alhazred, do you want to wed him, Kasima? Oh, please believe me when I say that I never agreed to marry that man. Even when my father trusted Abdul absolutely, I never liked him. But with mother and father gone, I'm afraid there's no stopping him. If you do not wish to marry him, Kasima, you shall not. I promise you. Only come with me now, and we shall escape. How? I cannot fit through this wall. Besides, do you think I could leave my kingdom, my people, in Abdul's hands? But Abdul would tear the castle apart if I were to disappear from my room. You shall have to do what you can to delay his plans from your end. I can't just leave you here. Alexander, do not despair from me. I have been safe in this room for nearly six months now. Abdul can be in no hurry, whatever he plans. After all, I'm to be his bride, am I not? I have been planning too, you see. I believe I can escape. If I can only get a chance to lay my hands on a weapon, there might be an opportunity in the hustle of the wedding. But I... Shh, just a moment more. Then you must go. Let us not waste time with words. Please, let me just look at you. 
Dear Alexander. Give her the dagger. Okay. Here, take this dagger. It's not much, but it might come in handy. Why, it's perfect. This is just the sort of thing I've been looking for. Thank you, Alexander. I'll keep it close and use it if I must. Alexander looks with longing at the fair Cosima. She's even a little more beautiful than he remembered. Anybody remember that from Echo Quest? Anybody? Alexander stands in the secret passageway, so close yet so far from his heart's desire. Oh no! Someone's coming! The lock on Cosima's door rattles abruptly. Alexander, hurry! Step away before they see you! Alexander hears scuffling and a woman's brief cry from the other side of the wall. Then, silence. Alexander looks through the chinks in the wall, anxious to see what the commotion was about. Cosima is gone. Where could they have taken her? How could he have let them take her? A fine rescuer I'm turning out to be. Steve is gone. Oh. Shadrach, salutations from the Society of the Black Cloak, etc., etc. My long preparations are about to come to fruition. In a matter of minutes, I will wed the lovely <laughs> Casima. Once I've established my power and my crown, I can stage another accident. The princess has proven infuriatingly stubborn, as you know. She's becoming quite a dangerous little thorn in my side. In a way, it is a shame I have to kill her. She is lovely and would be amusing to keep around, but I can't risk her talking treason to one of the guards. So far, I've managed to keep her locked away, but I can't continue that forever. Well, on to it now. I'd send her to you, but as you know, I had no luck in doing so with Mordak. I close in triumph. King Abdul Alhazred. I think it's about time to see if Shamir has taken care of the wench as I asked. It's almost time for the wedding. The wazir's words fill Alexander with blazing anger and fear for Cosima's life. That blackguard! That murderous swine! He'll not have his way if I have anything to say about it! It's a good thing he dictates all of his words. Alexander looks through the chink in the wall. He reads it all aloud, so he's able to hear everything The he wrote. wazir's study is now empty. There's a vague outline of what appears to be a door on the wall. Alexander sees nothing of interest there. Alexander sees lots of black cloaks. Remember, this was Mordak's room. Remember, I was in here in the other path. Or, uh, not Mordak, um, Vizier's room. Vizier Al Hazred. Mordak is the wizard. the ebony box and looks inside. Alexander can read the piece of paper without taking it. 
remember who we looked at this. Inside the ebony box is a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. Zebu. So remember the first part of the word was Ali. Ali Zebu. A storage trunk sits at the foot of the bed. The trunk bears a large brass lock. So the, remember last time we opened the trunk is locked. We opened the trunk with the we picked it with the with the nail, but now we don't have the nail. So how are we gonna open it this time? We have the skeleton key. Alexander inserts the skeleton key in the trunk's lock and turns it. He hears a click. Alexander opens the trunk. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and examines it. The letter is addressed to Abdul al Hazrin from the wizard Shadrach. It reads, Greetings to a brother of the Black Cloak. I was sorry to hear of great Mordak's death, though he was a bit of a ninny at chess. It seems the plans for that little kingdom of yours are coming along. I must congratulate you on your handling of the king and queen. Isolating the islands so that no protest could develop was another brilliant stroke. It looks like there's not much left to stand in your way. Do as I recommended with the girl, and you shall have your crown. That fiend! So that's the letter that we need to give to... Alexander steps confidently out into the upstairs hallway and sees two guard dogs. There's Bay. Bay, who the... Um, hello there. Don't just stand there. Grab him, Bay. Grab him, Bay. Uh, I'll bet it's that saboteur fellow the wizard warned us about. I say we run him through right here and now. No, woof. The wizard will run you through if he doesn't get a chance at the prisoner. Let's put him in the dungeon for safekeeping, then we'll go tell the captain. I will, you're right, let's go. You'll stay in here until we find out what the wizard wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. Who rescued us? Psst. Prince Alex. Jalo, what are you doing here? Never mind. Quick, before the guard dog patrol comes around again. But how did you know I was... This is no place to talk, Alexander. Just trust that I know everything that goes on in this camp. Now be more careful. If you get caught again, I don't know if I'll be able to get you out. So remember what he said? They were talking to the door. He said Ali. He couldn't hear the second part of the word. Since the door on the west wall has no visible knob or handle, Alexander decides to try to open it with his voice. He composes his words carefully. Ali. Zebu. Listen, door. I would have you open. Ali Zebu. It worked. Ali Zebu. Ali Zebu. All right, so this is the secret room. You're really smart. <coughs> Ali Zebu. Listen, door. He outsmarted my everybody. Ali Zebu. Alexander is standing in the castle of the crown's treasure room. The soft-toned room seems very secure. Along the walls are trunks and caskets, probably full of the kingdom's treasure. In the middle of the room is a low table. A small table graces the middle of the room. The table is covered by a velvet drapery. The initials AA are embroidered on the drapery. AA? That must stand for Abdul al Hazrat. Let's see what's under this. Alexander pulls the drapery aside, curious as to what might lie underneath. On the 
table is a miniature oak tree. It looks very old. Hmm. That must be the sacred miniature oak that the druids thought the winged ones stole. On the table is a strange looking stone that's giving off an odd high pitched noise. That must be the Isle of Wonder singing stone. Didn't the queens think that the beast had stolen it? On the table is a coat of arms with the head of a beast on the crest. Hmm. Beast said that his coat of arms was stolen by the druids. This must be it. On the table is a fleece made of gold. That fleece must belong to the winged ones. And they thought the Isle of Wonder had taken it. As Alexander looks at the objects on the table, he realizes the depth of the wazir's cunning. It must have been the wazir or an accomplice who stole that one thing most precious to each island, and then leaked rumors that one of the other islands was responsible. What did the wazir have to gain by causing the islands to hate one another? Alexander decides to leave the singing stone here in the treasure room for safekeeping until it can be returned to the Isle of Wonder. Now, if we take this stuff, then they'll think we stole it. So we should leave it in the treasure room, and then it'll be proof that the vizier stole it. And then we'll be able to tell... We can tell everyone. We can tell everyone that the vizier stole it. So now we have proof that the vizier was behind it. Proof that Vizier is behind everything. Intruder, grab it! Uh, I, I was just looking for the kitchen. I'll bet you're the foreign saboteur the wizier warned us about. He sure fits the description. He's supposed to be dangerous, Mike. Let's throw him in a dungeon. Then go tell Captain Saladin. Right? Good idea. Wait, wasn't Saladin the I think someone must have let our prisoner loose, Captain Ralph. Saladin is a colleague. Who would be crazy enough to do that, Al? I don't know, but if I find out, that traitor will be sorry. Let's keep an extra sharp eye in the halls. We'll make sure no one can get near him again. Right, Al. A guard dog slam the door and lock it. Alexander has a feeling there will be no help from Jello this time. <laughs> The dungeon door is locked. Alexander is standing in a dim, damp dungeon cell. The walls and floor are made of gray granite stones. A cot in the corner is the only furniture. A gargoyle peers down maliciously from over the dungeon door. Alexander sees no use for that item there. There's no reason to use that object there. Alexander sees nothing of interest in that part of the dungeon. Using that on the door would accomplish nothing. There's no reason to... Alexander sees nothing of interest in that part of the dungeon. Using that on the door would accomplish nothing. 
that would serve no purpose. There's no reason to use that on the torch. Alexander unlocks the door with his skeleton key. That does work. And quickly makes his escape. Good idea. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. I guess we're immune to being locked up now. Pretty much can always escape. That's pretty cool. The floor does not respond. Since the door in the west wall has no visible knob or handle, Alexander decides to... I wonder if there's anything else in here. I think we're supposed to wait now for the wedding to start, but... Listen, go... It worked. Alas, the trumpet won't bring these walls tumbling down and thus is of little use to Alexander. Alexander doesn't need the... Alexander's... Alexander has no wish... Here, well, well, Hal, I you did what you find. Only this funny looking key. He ain't got it no more, though, now does he? <laughs> Good work, Ralph. They took my key. They took the key. Just as Alexander realizes that I found this stuff. Alexander opens the secret it. passage. Maybe we could spy while we're waiting. Oh, right. Alexander takes up another look through the chink in the wall. Captain Saladin has left, and the other two guard dogs are talking too quietly for Alexander to hear them. Alexander looks through the chinks in the wall, anxious to see what the commotion was about. Cosima is gone. Where could they have... A fine... Alexander sees nothing of it.
Alexander opens inside. I just, I just loaded the game. I want to try something. The trunk has already. Alexander opens the unlocked trunk. There's undoubtedly more unnerving information in those letters, but Alexander has a. Alexander crawls back. The door in the west wall has no visible knob or handle. Alexander decides to try to open it with his voice. He composes his words carefully. Listen, door. I would have you open. Ali Zabu. Alexander pulls the drapery aside, curious as to what might lie underneath. Let me see if I can... On the table... Mm. Look those trunks... Again. On the table is... Mm. On the table... That must... On the table is... That fleece must belong to the... As Alexander looks at the object... What did the wazir have to... Okay, so now I got points for that. Let's save again. All right. Yeah, the, they're, all the titles are puns in these games. So we just found proof that the vizier's behind. Alexander him. hears the sound of music coming from the east. It sounds somewhat classical, but oh no, it's wedding music. Alexander hears a door off the north hall open. Then the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. Alexander hears the sound of a guard's footsteps coming from the north. Wait, there are more footsteps approaching from the west. Now what? Alexander hears the guard enter the west hall. Alexander looks cautiously around the grand hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. Ah, yeah. Hurry, it's almost the wedding. Ah, you won't be way too slow. Prince Alexander, here. The wizier will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. Gotta give him the note, right? Yeah. Wait! If you love your princess, you'll hear me out. The wazir is not what he appears to be. Kasima is in terrible danger. I have proof that this is so. For your princess's sake, you must believe me. Let me see that. Saladin reads the letter, his sword points still against Alexander's throat. Alexander watches the guard dog's noble face darken with rage. Mm, this is treason. I'll have his throat. 
But how do I know this letter is not a forgery? You could have written this yourself. But I did not. Have you no doubts of your own about our husband? Don't you see? All he wants is the crown. Cosima is being coerced. We must stop the wedding. It is true. I have had my suspicions about the wizard, especially when King Caliphim and Queen Alaria died. But I have seen Cosima with him several times. She appears to be quite happy, even enthusiastic. I don't believe she could love him if he truly were so wicked. I cannot believe for a moment that she loves that snake. A jilted lover would not believe it. But come, see for yourself. The captain of the guard leads Alexander into the throne room, where a ceremony seems to be in progress. Alexander feels his blood run cold at the sight. I, Kasima, declare Abdul al Hazred as my lawful and beloved husband and king of this realm. But, Kasima, what are you saying? Is it the real Do you still claim that the princess is being forced? Perhaps it's you that's the danger, as the wazir has said. Alexander approaches the wedding party. Prince Alexander here? This is an outrage! How dare you allow this traitor to get past you, Sadigan? You stupid mutt! Can't you even keep the castle free of assassins during your own princess's wedding? Kill him! Kill him now! Lord Alhazred, with all due respect, you are not quite king yet. And this is a wedding ceremony, not an execution. What? How dare you contradict me, you flea-bitten mongrel! I gave a direct order. Obey me, or closed. feel my wrath. Milady. I apologize for my behavior, but I am yours to command in all things. I wanted merely to hear your own wishes from your own lips. Tell me what it is that you wish me to do with this young man, and I will obey. Why, Captain, you heard my dear Abdul. If he wishes this atrocious young man's death, then I want nothing more than to see him get his wish. Obey thy liege now and always. As you wish, Princess. Just as Saladin prepares to run Alexander through with his sword, a shout is heard from the direction of the Grand Hall. Hold! In the name of the true king! King Caliphim and Queen Alaria burst into the throne room, looking alive and well, and full of wrath. Behind them, a line of supporters look prepared to battle, if necessary, for their beloved royal couple. Is that you, Kasima, darling, are you all right? Has he hurt you? Hands off of her, you murderous goat! If I want your advice, I'll ask for it, mother. But, Galifin, that's not Kasima. I'd know my daughter anywhere. What have you done with our daughter, you devil? The lovely image of Cosima suddenly bursts into smoke and is replaced by the Wazir's genie. Why, you, you conniving serpent! Get him, guards! Saladin, your sword! Drat it all! You may have ruined my plans, but you won't get me or your precious Cosima. Get them, Shamir! I command you! He's getting away! Stop him! Yes, sire! As soon as I deal with this genie! Follow me.
Consider. Do you think you could marry me? Could you ever have doubted it, my prince? Oh, guards! Princess Casima, are you well? I'm quite well, thank you. Please take Abdul and put him in the dungeon. See to it that he gets a doctor. Yes, Majesty.
think that's Bay, the bulldog. Yeah, Bay. 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 Tell Bay. Bay. <laughs> you tell him, Bay. You tell him good. <laughs> Kasima and Look at the wedding now. ask oh, Captain Sullivan to perform oh, their wedding oh, ceremony. Sullivan oh, is honored to do so. Oh, On this oh, historical oh, day oh, of great joy in the land of the Green Isles, oh, yeah, look. we witness King the union of Kasima, beloved princess of this realm, there. and she's Alexander, she's prince of Daventry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, Prince Alexander of Daventry, take Princess Kasima to be your wife, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. And do you, Princess Kasima of the land of the Green Isles, take Prince Alexander to be your husband, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. Do you have a ring? I have Alexander's royal insignia ring. Very good. Please place the ring on Kasima's finger. Who gives this bride to be wed? Her mother and I willingly give our daughter's hand in wedlock. Who will speak for the groom? The three I will. Wait, is that Alexander's that mother and I recognize his marriage to Princess Cassima and the last ones who can oh, sanction this union. Then, Alexander and Cassima, I now yeah, pronounce Cinderella you man is. and wife. You may kiss the bride. Hooray! 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 Look at the white queen and the red queen are there. You can barely see the red queen. Yeah. Where's the red queen? Congratulations, my children. I have an important question for you. Please hear me. Yes, sire? Alexander, I welcome you into our family with open arms. I place trust in an husband because I so badly wanted a son and a husband for my beloved daughter. I was wrong. But you are true and good, Alexander. You have proven yourself to all my people. Thank you, sir. Valaria and I have been through much. Even though we have returned to our kingdom, I do not think we are able to reign again. Will you two consider the crown? I know as king and queen, you can heal this small kingdom from all the damage that our past has inflicted upon it. Oh, Father! Why, well, I'm honored. What do you think, Cosima? I love my homeland, Alexander. I would be happy to stay and serve it all my days. Father, I believe I'm needed here. Would you be very disappointed if... Son, you must follow your destiny. I do believe the land of the Green Isles needs you. You'll be a magnificent king. That's King Grim. I accept. Don't worry, mother. With Shamir's powers, we'll be able to visit often. I'm not about to forget my family. Congratulations, Alexander. That's Princess Princess Rosella. Thank you. From King's Quest. Oh, Alexander, I'm so glad. Between the return of my beloved parents and our new reign, you've made me so happy. I'm glad I can make up for some of your suffering. Congratulations, King Alexander. Now, when we return home to Daventry, your crew will be glad to hear that your battle at sea was worthwhile. You play this and I am as grateful that my crew did not pay for my driven heart. You have only brought us all good fortune, sire. We'll never finish. With Shamir saved and his power used for good, reuniting the islands will be far easier. He has already repaired the ferry. Your road will be easier now that the islands are no well, longer free. Like already the wounds are starting to heal. Yes, my love. Discovering the island's stolen so treasures so has done to more to bring one. peace to this land than anything else. It is now clear that Al Hajar had Shamir steal each of the island's most valued treasures, then blame the thefts on others to cause the islands to hate each other. 
Now let us celebrate our good fortune. The evil that has plagued this land is done, and a new reign begins. Long live King Alexander and Queen Cosima. Long live King Alexander! King's Quest 7 is even longer than Long live Queen Cosima! Did you? Long live the land of the Green Isles! That one you play is King Graham, the guy with the funny hat. Although he wasn't a king, he was still a stranger. Too nuts. Oh, 